fourth and fifth graders. My name is Jason Birkenpass, and more importantly, this, this is Guernsey here. She is a nine-year-old dairy cow that we hand milk here um, on this place. This is her little baby, Agnes, that is uh, just a week old tomorrow, actually, so uh, she's still very new. The important thing to know about dairy cows and any cow, really, is she can't produce milk without having a baby first because that's what the baby has to eat. Uh, the thing with dairy cows is there's way too much milk for the calf to eat it all and if it even could eat it all it'd just get too sick because it's just too much. So that's where all of our important milk and ice cream and cheese and yogurt and everything tasty in the grocery store comes from. So it's important that we have these dairy cows around to make all that good stuff. She's still hungry, so she's still trying to eat. <laughs> One thing that a lot of people notice about dairy cows is they see this big hip bone, and you can kind of see her ribs a little bit, and this big hole right here. So people think that she's really skinny, but really she's actually quite healthy. And the difference there is on a beef cow, what you're used to seeing on the side of the road, all of this is filled up with muscle. And that muscle is what beef is at, at the grocery store. So since she's a dairy cow, not a beef cow, she goes, all of her energy goes into making this big old bag of milk down here instead of all that muscle. So she's actually a very healthy weight right now um, and looking good. So down here in her udder, she has four different quarters. Hi, little baby. And each quarter is kind of its own chamber. And in that chamber, it's like a sponge and each of the little pores of the sponge sit there and make milk all day long. She never stops. So that's why we have to milk her once or twice a day, usually twice a day, because um, she just has so much milk that she gets sore and grumpy if we don't milk her. Uh, so that's really important to do. So in milking this cow, I usually use two hands, and uh, there's, there's four different quarters to milk. So you can do one side, and then I get that milked out, and then I go to the other side. And that just looks like this. You just want to simulate what the calf does. Um, and that, they, they have bottom teeth only on the front. So they cover up their, their teeth with their tongue. And then they pinch the top of the teeth with, with their tongue kind of and then they suck out the rest on the bottom. And that's basically what you want to recreate when you're milking the cow, is what the calf can do with the mom. And that, that way it just feels natural to her and she, she doesn't squirm. It, it actually feels good to her to get all that pressure out. Um, so yeah, you just want to squeeze the top and then the bottom. Top and then the bottom. Takes about 10 to 15 minutes and I can get about a bucket full out of her and that's on top of what the calf is eating already. All right, kids, so who likes a big glass of milk in the morning or with their cereal? Or better yet, who likes cheese on their ham sandwich at lunchtime or yogurt for breakfast? Or the very best, my favorite, is ice cream after work. Who likes ice cream after school? Where all that uh, milk and ice cream and cheese comes from is not just the grocery store. It has to come somewhere before that, and that's thanks to our cows here. So we milk the cows, and then it goes into a processing facility like Dairy Gold in Bozeman, and they turn it into uh, bottled milk there, um, and then the cream gets separated there, and the cream goes to Billings, and that's where things like your Will Coxon's ice cream at the grocery store comes from and your cheese and your yogurt and all that kind of thing that's just very tasty. Um, it doesn't just appear in the store from nowhere, it comes from the cow first. So you guys have probably learned about photosynthesis in school and you probably don't know how that relates to a cow but it absolutely relates to a cow because um, her diet consists of mainly green grass or green grass hay that we make during the summertime when it is green grass. Um, so basically, your, the milk that's coming out uh, comes from the energy that she eats from, from nice green grass. So uh, she's basically a big solar converter because the sunshine that makes a big green, or the nice green grass uh, makes her favorite food to eat. 
and then she eats that and it goes through her four compartment stomach. She pulls the energy out of that to make all of that milk down there for you guys to eat later on. The black and white ones are Holsteins and those are the main big producers of milk. They make more milk than these ones. This is a Guernsey, um, mostly Guernsey. She's got a little bit of Jersey in her. So those are kind of the, I'd say the three main ones. A fun fact about these cows, these Jerseys and Guernseys is they make milk with more butter fat in them. There's more cream in these cows than there is in like Holstein cows. And cream is what mostly goes to making your cheeses and yogurts and things like that. So these kind of have their own niche and that's more so the high butter fat in their milk than the Holsteins. Uh, in, in the state of Montana, we actually can't sell our raw milk. So we have lots of friends that like to take it and make cheese and, and we feed it to bum calves and bum sheep, lambs, some things like that. Um, but we can't sell it without going through a big process um, like the commercial dairies do, where they take it to Dairy Gold and go through pasteurization and, and to get all the bacteria and stuff out of the milk and process it. Okay, kids, so now who, who wants to get up at, at three or four in the morning so they can go get the first round of milking done? Probably no one, so that's why you can thank your farmers when you go to the to the fridge and get your, your cheese stick and your glass of milk out there, because they already did that work for you. And it never stops, every day, 24-7, even on Christmas and Easter, they gotta get up at four in the morning and, and milk their cows, so. This is how it was done in the olden days before there was milking machines and big milking parlors. Um, basically everyone had at least one, one milk cow or, or even five probably tops to keep their own families fed with, with that kind of thing all, all year long. And um, So it's changed because I bet most of you don't have a dairy cow in your backyards. So nowadays to, to be able to feed all the people that eat ice cream and drink milk there's big commercial facilities that uh, milk hundreds of cows at a time instead of just one at a time with their hands. And those commercial facilities have milking machines. And the cows basically walk up an alleyway and a machine just connects onto their udder all four at a time. And it can milk the whole cow in about less than 10 minutes, which is how long it takes me to milk this cow. But I only get a gallon out of this cow and those guys are getting 10 gallons twice a day out of their cows. So in order to feed all these people that we have growing in the world, it takes a big operation to keep up with that demand. Here we just have one little cow just to keep us fed with our own milk and um, a lot of times it's not even enough for us because we share it all. So they're pretty happy to have those milking machines to make it go faster as well.